Okay, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our latest Cowfish Outreach webinar. I hope everyone is enjoying their Friday so far. Um, my name is Bernice Monero, and I am with the Center for Healthy Communities at Chico State. Um, so we're going to go over two really important topics today. Um, they're a little bit different, but they're both really important. Uh, the first part of the webinar is going to cover the SSI expansion, what that looks like, and how it's being implemented. And then the second part will cover website updates to make sure that your website is up to date, and also some things to keep in mind to make sure that you're up to speed with that part of the contract. So just to let you know, we are recording this webinar. It will be available on our website later today, and then the slides will be available there as well. So you can um, go to our website later today, and those both should be up. Um, also, please feel free to use the chat box during the webinar if any questions come up, um, and we'll be happy to answer those as we go. So now I'm going to turn it over to Malai to get us up to date on the SSI expansion that has been in the process for the last few months. Good morning, everyone. This is Malai. Um, so today's webinar will really cover the policy changes. It will include um, other eligibility-related information um, to older adults and individuals with disabilities, um, because these two groups do have slightly different rules for CalFresh. And so I think with the expansion, um, it's good to also know some of those basic older adults um, and individuals with disabilities roles in regards to CalFresh. Okay, so um, as you know, um, SSI SSP recipients are currently ineligible for CalFresh benefits. If they are part of a CalFresh household currently, um, they are considered an excluded household member, meaning that they and their income and resources do not count uh, when determining CalFresh. Um, just a couple um, reminders here. Um, Supplemental Security Income, which is SSI, is a needs-based program. It's a federal program for individuals with limited income and resources who, um, who are, you know, over 65, blind, or have a disability. And then the state supplemental payment, it's the SSP. Um, it's a state program that supplements the SSI. So in 1974, California chose to increase the SSP grant instead of administering the CalFresh program. Um, this policy is known as cash out, and over time, the value of CalFresh has increased while cash out remained flat and lost relative value. Uh, so next slide, please. Assembly Bill 1811, signed last June by the governor, reversed the Cal sorry, <clears throat> reversed the SSI cash out policy and created two new state-funded nutrition programs. And these two new, sorry. <coughs> these two new state-funded nutrition programs will hold harmless existing CalFresh households that will negatively um, impact, um, you know, for households who may be negatively impacted by the reversal of cash out. So starting June 1st, um, SSI SSP, SSP individuals uh, will be eligible for CalFresh, given that all other criteria are met. Um, and then just a reminder that, um, you know, there are no changes to the current SSI SSP amount. Um, and then also we have, you know, uh, we can actually start applying, um, helping individuals who are on SSI SSP apply for CalFresh benefits starting May but they will not get issued benefits until June, because that's when it actually starts. All right, so the impact on California. So there are about 369,000 newly eligible households that are expected to participate in CalFresh. Um, 44,000 households will experience an increase in benefits, and about 73,000 will experience a decrease in benefits, and 7,100 households will experience a loss of eligibility, which will make them eligible to two new state-funded programs, which we will talk about in the next slide. Okay, so here are the two new state-funded nutrition programs. Um, the first one is the Supplemental Nutrition Program. 
So this provides supplemental state nutrition benefits to households that experience um, a decrease in CalFresh benefits at the time of implementation. And then the second program is the Transitional Nutrition Pro um, Benefit Program, which provides transitional state-funded nutrition benefits to CalFresh households that experience a loss of eligibility at the time of um, at the time of implementation. And as you can see, um, it's gonna, it's highlighted in blue. Um, there's regulations and actually an ACL um, that talks about the two programs. Um, it talks about the program reportings, the requirements, and how to maintain those programs. And you can review those as well. Next slide, please. Okay, so the impact on the ongoing households, or sorry, impact on newly eligible households. Um, these households are households where all members are SSI, SSP recipients. Um, and this means that, you know, they previously are not um, eligible to um, CalFresh because they're on SSI and SSP. Um, and then just a reminder, when I'm talking about an ACL, that's an all-county letter. Um, that's what the state um, sends out uh, regarding new regulations. And then going back to newly eligible households, um, households usually, you know, with elderly and disabled households, they usually recertify at 24 and 36 months. But with those who are newly eligible to CalFresh due to the policy change, um, they will have a shortened certification period based on their case number. All right, and then the impact on ongoing households. Um, these are households that um, are currently receiving CalFresh and they have an excluded household member at the moment. So that means that they can, um, you know, ongoing households can add the SSI SSP member to their household, and then they can re add this person at um, their uh, reporting period, at their recertification, or through a voluntary request. Um, if adding this person increases um, their CalFresh benefits, or if no changes happen by adding this SSI individual, then these households will continue to receive CalFresh. But if there is a decrease or loss of eligibility, then these households will either be eligible to supplemental nutrition benefits or transitional nutrition benefits. So SMB or TMB. Next slide, please. All right, so just a couple of reminders here regarding um, this population that um, is newly eligible to CalFresh. So CalFresh defines someone um, as an older adult, um, someone who is over 60. And then individuals with disabilities are defined as someone who's receiving social security income for disability or blindness, or if they're receiving SSI benefits, or if they're receiving other um, disability-based benefits, such as railroad retirement or veterans affairs um, benefits, or if they're receiving Medi-Cal services because of a disability. And then for older adults and those with disabilities, there is no gross income test but the household must still meet the net income test of 100% FPL, federal poverty limit for the household size. So if you look at the current pre-screen, that's showing 200%, the net is half of that. And then a reminder is that the county determines the net income. It's not how you and I would you know, normally talk about net income. So just keep that in mind. All right, next slide. All right, and then um, other things that may help um, these household benefits uh, or get more CalFresh benefits is the standard medical deduction. So if households have um, out-of-pocket medical expenses that are not covered by their insurance or by Medi-Cal or anything like that, um, they may qualify for a deduction. So the first one is the standard medical deduction. If they have medical expenses that are over $35 a month, they can get um, a $120 deduction. And then um, they do not have to be they do not have to um, re-verify if it is, unless it has increased above $155, $155 a month. And then the second medical expense is the excess, excess medical deduction. Um, if they have verified out-of-pocket medical expenses that exceed $155 a month, they can, actual, they can deduct the actual medical expenses that are over $35 a month. So anything over $35, um, they can deduct. Um, and they must be re-verified if they have changed by more than $25 a month. 
um, and the state has provided a form to help, you know, it's a tool that can help your clients, you know, determine what is a medical expense and how they can track it. It's not um, required, but it's optional and it's just a good tool to use. So we're just gonna pull it up real quick and have a quick look at that. And so this is the CF31, the CalFresh medical deduction form. And as you can see, you know, it talks about uh, medical or dental care, prescribed, you know, over-the-counter medications. Um, it looks like you can't see it. We'll share it. Let's see. Okay. There we go. Hopefully you can see it now. Um, so mm -hmm. this is what it looks like. Um, you can see that you can check the appropriate boxes. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can type, you can actually type it down. Uh, what it, who the person is, what type of expense, how much, how often, and who pays for it. And then this is just a helpful to, to, tool to use um, when you're talking to your clients. And then on the back page, it also talks about, it's, you know, the very last bullet, number four, it has examples of verifications, how they can provide verification for certain expenses. So it can be medical bills or receipts or, you know, um, then, you know, policy premiums, anything, you know, it can be something from the pharmacy, anything they have that shows that they did pay for that medical expense. All right. Okay. And then, um, let's see. next slide, please. Next slide. All right. And just a quick plug in here for um, residents of institutions. So, um, they, someone is considered a resident of an institution when the institution provides them with the majority of the meals, which is, you know, over 50% of three meals daily as part of their reg normal services. And most residents of institutions are ineligible to CalFresh unless they meet exemptions. And there's a whole list of that. Um, when the slides are up on the website, you can look at that whole list to see if um, your clients fall in that exemption list. And then this next piece here talks about dependent care. Um, households that require dependent care to allow household members to accept or continue work or attend school or attend training to prepare for work may qualify for a dependent care deduction. Um, if an expense is being claimed as a dependent care expense, it cannot also be counted as a medical expense. So you can only count a deduction as a medical expense or a dependent care, it can't be double counted. Um, and then verification is not needed unless it is questionable. So there are no verifications needed if there is dependent care. And then there's also another form, the CF10, the Dependent Care Cost Affidavit form, that can be used. All right. And then this piece, I know we talked about households a lot in our training. This is um, set, this is a little bit separate just because um, older adults and those with disabilities, they just have different roles. And this is just another um, plug and reminder. So um, an elderly member and their spouse who is living with others um, and is unable to purchase or prepare meals separately due to a disability may qualify as a separate household. So um, the individual must be over 60 and have a disability and the income of others whom um, they're living with cannot exceed 165% of the FBL, of the federal poverty limit. So they can be a separate household if the case is that they can't um, purchase and prepare because of a disability or due to age. All right, so the restaurant meal program, um, it allows um, eligible homeless, older adults and individuals with disabilities to use their EBT cards to purchase hot and prepared, ready to eat, meals at participating restaurants. Um, restaurant meal programs are not available in all counties. There's only, um, I can't remember how many counties there are, but it's, a, it's, a, it's maybe like 10 or less. Um, other, I know that there are a couple counties who are trying to get on there right now. Um, it, once you get the slides, or once uh, the slides are available on the website, you can actually click on that link and you'll see a list of all the participating counties. And then SSI and SSP recipients are considered um, older adults or someone with a disability, and they are they will be able to participate in the restaurant meal program if they do have that program in your county. Okay, so when you're working with older adults, or you know when you're helping them with an application, or if you have questions, um, again there are different roles, and so 
um, something that was introduced a couple of years ago is the Elderly Simplified Application Project, so ESAP. Um, what that is is that if all household members are over 60 or have a disability and the household has no earned income, then um, they do not need to do um, an interview. They recertify every 36 months and they don't really have to turn in verifications if the county can get that electronically verified. And so, again, households where members are over 60 or have a disability um, and no earned income. So if they're just receiving their SSI, then they may fall under this. Um, and the next piece I want to talk about is the authorized representative or the AR. Um, this is someone who may be authorized to act on behalf of the household to apply for CalFresh benefits and to obtain and use CalFresh benefits on behalf of the household. So this can be, you know, if you're working with an older adult or someone who has a disability and they're unable to, you know, go to the office or do the, or do the interview, um, they can actually assign someone to be an authorized representative. And this person can be their adult child or their caregiver. Um, we as outreach workers are not authorized representatives. So I just want to make that very clear because as authorized representatives, we are, um, if you are an authorized representative, you're responsible for you know anything that's reported. So if the um, if there's you know questions, you might have to get, you know you have to know the household really well to be an authorized representative. And so um, I don't recommend outreach workers to be um, authorized representatives um, because they are they have the same rights and responsibilities as the clients. Next slide. And then other opportunities is, you know, definitely um, building partnerships and share information with your campus organizations like um, DSPS or DSS, ARC, or any other services or programs on your campus that serve um, students with disabilities or other programs geared towards um, older adults. Um, and then also connecting with your area agencies on aging, so um, the local AAAs. You can click on that link once you get the slides and you can see a list of um, who is overseeing your area. And if you have any other questions or things come up about um, the CalFresh expansion, um, you can definitely reach out to your CHC program manager. Um, and then there is a new pre-screen and that will be up on the website shortly. It's gonna um, have, it's gonna, we're gonna, we're, we've taken out the SSI question in the pre-screen, so it's up to date. We usually don't, update materials until the summer, but because of this change, we're going to go ahead and make that change and keep it up on the website. Um, and then next slide. Okay, so here's um, a list of resources that will be very helpful if you're, you know, more interested in this topic or reading more about it. Um, so the CDSS has a great um, list of resources. The first one is Expanding CalFresh um, to SSI T recipients. So it really goes, it's an overview of the expansion. And then the state has also put on a training series regarding policy and access. So it's a series of trainings on policy, eligibility, and how to serve older adults. And um, a list of related ACLs, all county letters, and all county informing notices, the ACINs. Um, it's relevant regulations regarding the CAPRESH expansion. And then the last one I wanna point out is the all county readiness plan. So if, if you click on that, you're going to see a list of all counties and what their plan is in regards to this CalFresh expansion. So it's going to talk about um, the call-in option, the um, online option, and also um, the phone options and what counties are doing with that and how they're addressing this large influx of um, applications. And then, and then um, okay, so I wrapped it up. You know, pretty quickly, there's a ton of information on um, the expansion. Um, just a reminder that, you know, when we're talking about the policy piece, you're going to hear cash out. We are not using cash out. We're using CalFresh expansion because cash out sounds like uh, we're taking cash or that they're going to lose their SSI or SSP or things are going to get decreased. Um, so we really want to use CalFresh expansion. Um, and then we'll open, up, open it up to questions. If you have questions, go ahead and type it in. And then uh, we'll address those and then once those are done we'll move over to our next topic
So it looks like there are no questions at this time. So we're going to um, move on to the next topic. Um, Zach and Andy are really going to be going over the CalFresh Outreach website and the requirements. So I'm going to turn it over to Andy and Zach. Great. Thank you, Malai. Um, so hello, everyone. Actually, My, there, is, there is a question. Sorry. Oh, I'm okay. so sorry. Um, so it looks like, Nancy, um, are the CalFresh expansion themes and posters available? Um, there, the state has released some information. Um, if you look on the website, you'll be able to find those on there. Um, on the resources link, if you click on that first link, um, it should lead you to um, information and um, materials. Okay. So hello everyone, this is Andy speaking and I have Zach here uh, with me. We're going to be going over some information about updating your CalFresh Outreach website. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and get started. So here's a quick overview. Uh, we'll be going over contract website requirements, present the compact and expanded template, how to upload website content, and then go over your timeline, and then finally end with some questions. So contract website requirements. Um, I just put this on here because I just wanted to go over some of these few points. Partners are required to have CFO related materials online, but the good news is, is that the Center for Healthy Communities will help provide a template for our partners. And then the last one, if you choose to create your own content, please make sure that it gets approved by your uh, program manager. And then just really quickly, I do want to state that um, having access to uploading information on your website can be really helpful when trying to achieve other goals. So for example, not having the correct language on potentially exempt program websites can be a reason for program denial on the exemption list for student eligibility. Um, if you have access to getting the correct language on your website, the more likely your program will be to get that approved. And then really quickly, we just want to remind you that CalFresh Logo has had a facelift recently. So please make sure to update your website if you already have CalFresh outreach information. And for those of you who don't, just make sure to use the updated logo. Of course, here's a style guide link um, once you receive those slides. And it's also located on our subcontractor webpage. But don't worry about this too much. We're going to be doing a social media webinar in June. So this is Zach, and um, I am going to talk to you a bit about our website templates. Um, so to make the process of creating and updating your website easier, we're providing you with, the, with two templates to work off of, a compact and an expanded version. Um, both meet all the website-related requirements outlined in your CalFresh outreach contract as well as provide all the necessary information about CalFresh outreach and application assistance. These templates will be available for, for download in the subcontractor resources section of the Center for Healthy Communities CalFresh outreach website uh, beginning this afternoon. Uh, the compact template is designed to have a small overall footprint and it takes space limitations into account. It covers the first six items on this list. Um, what is CalFresh? What is CalFresh Outreach? Where do I go for assistance? Basic and student eligibility requirements and the application process. You might want to consider using this template if you have to submit website material, material to your IT department in order to get it posted. And we'll talk more about that submission process um, moving on in a little bit. The expanded template contain, contains the same information that's included in the compact version, as well as some additional information. And, and this is something you might want to consider using if, if you're able to create and update website material on your own. So you do have the option to create your own content, as Andy alluded to earlier, but there are a number of advantages to using our templates. First, they include links to accurate eligibility information. And we found that eligibility information changes somewhat regularly, so we keep this up to date at the Center for Healthy Communities so that you don't have to. And additionally, all the content on our templates is based off regulation language just to ensure accuracy. And since you would be using that pre-approved material, just the overall approval process will be easier and faster so you can get your site up and running more quickly and lastly it is it does save time and it's just it's easier uh, you can literally 
copy and paste a lot of the content that we will be providing to you onto your website um, without having to worry about wording and things like that. So let's take a look at the templates themselves. We're going to pull up the compact template real quick here. And while we're doing that, I will uh, just kind of start with a little, a few housekeeping items that we have up on the top of both versions. Um, first, we have a reminder of the logo and the tagline requirements. And I'm not going to say a lot about that right now, but the most important thing to keep in mind is that your website needs to include the CalFresh food logo and the USDA acknowledgement tagline. Um, so next we have a color key, and as you can see, the content that you can just copy directly onto your website is going to be in black on this template. Information you'll need to add that's unique to your institution is in green italics. Links to include on your site are in blue, and then additional notes and explanations are in purple italics, and those are things that you, know, you wouldn't want to include on your webpage, they're just kind of, um, explanations that, that we're providing for you um, as the website creator. So the compact template really focuses on providing the basic information about CalFresh outreach and application assistance. And it starts with uh, descriptions of CalFresh and CalFresh outreach, and then moves right into providing information about where to go for assistance. This would be the section where you'd want to include information about your food pantry, your drop-in assist on, um, in, in, in your area. Um, we also recommend that you include a link to getcalfresh.org, uh, and that's just to accommodate those folks that may not feel comfortable seeking in-person service, so we provide an option for them as well. Um, so moving on to the basic and student eligibility requirements, as I mentioned earlier, we recommend that you simply provide links to the Center for Healthy Communities CalFresh outreach website for this information due to the fact that we closely monitor these requirements and we update our website to reflect any changes that occur. And that way, that's just one less thing that, that you have to worry about on your site. Um, and then last but not least, we have um, a step-by-step -step description of the application process itself. And um, that is, that's the compact template. So um, we will uh, feel free to ask questions about, about the templates as we go. And I will, uh, I'll do my best to answer those questions at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to the expanded template, if we could. And um, the expanded template also meets all your contract requirements, but it includes a bit of additional information that you might find useful. Um, also, the material is presented in a slightly different way um, in that it's broken up into three separate sections or subpages, if you will. Um, and those are CalFresh Outreach Basics, Immediate Assistance, and then a section that focuses specifically on your location's CFO program. Another thing that I'll point out here is that there are multiple spots throughout this template that we set aside for information about where clients and potential clients can go for assistance. And we do that purposefully since this is really uh, some of the most important information that you'll be providing on your website. And so uh, we just wanna make sure that every visitor is to the website sees that information at least once. And if you have scrolled through our uh, CHC CFO website, you'll see that we do that on our site as well. You'll also notice a lot of the same information that you saw in the compact template. So in the interest of time, I'll just highlight the info that's unique to this template. So um, subtitles one and two should look pretty familiar. Um, as you can see, uh, subtitle three provides a bit of additional information. Um, and just the types of services that CalFresh Outreach provides. Um, section two should look pretty familiar as well. Um, so we'll just, we'll move on to section three. So you can kind of scroll down, there we go. Um, and section three houses that information about your, your location's CalFresh Outreach program. Um, and here you can you can include links to the basic and student eligibility information, 
You can reiterate your drop and assist info. Uh, you can describe the application process and, and all that should kind of look familiar as well. It's just presented in a slightly different way than it was on the compact template. Um, but after that application process information, we include some additional information on typical verification documents and a link to the full list of verifications that a county eligibility worker might request from an applicant. So those are the two templates, and um, now I'm gonna turn it back over to Andy to discuss some of the common ways to upload your CalFresh information onto your website or web page. Okay, so I hope everyone is asking now, how do I get that information onto my website? Well, so the Center for Healthy Communities, we recommend that you contact your IT services to determine the process for uploading website content, and then also figuring out what kind of content manager system you're using. So for example, here at Chico State, we use Cascade. Um, there are also two other common ways to Two common ways content is actually uploaded using the CMS. Most of the time it's either by connecting with IT and being able to get trained and then someone uploads material themselves, or it can be also done by submitting content straight to IT services for them to do it. It really depends on what your system, what your um, location is doing. All right, so the last thing that, that we want to talk about before we take some questions is to share a timeline for developing your, your own CalFresh Outreach web page or website. Um, so I also want to say this is a great project to focus on over the summer as things slow down at, at your various locations. Um, our goal is really to have all of our partners' websites up and running by the end of July. So we're suggesting that for the remainder of this month, the month of May, you really focus on contacting your IT services at your location and determining the process for uploading that website content like Andy was just talking about. And then also decide if you, you, want, you, you will be using one of the templates that we're offering or you're, you're choosing to develop some of your own material. Um, be sure to give yourself plenty of time to work with us to develop and refine materials if you do choose to create your own. And I'm talking about like probably, you know, at least a month, maybe two months, because you'll need to receive approval from your CHC program manager on all those materials that you're developing on your own. So once you have your materials already, uh, we're suggesting taking June to really upload that content provi or provide IT services with that content so that they can upload it. And then the month of July for finalizing everything with your CHC program manager and taking the, the website live. And again, I, I really wanna um, emphasize that it's our goal to have everyone's websites up and running by the end of July if possible. And also, Again, your CHC program manager is sure to help you through that whole process. We, and you know, I we we all we know that everyone has a different level of comfort with this process and and with um, website design, computers, and technology in general. And so we're very uh, we will really be there to help you all along the way. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out to us if you have any questions um, along the way. And um, now I'm going to turn it back over to Brandy to just wrap things up and then we'll answer some questions. Yeah, so I just wanted to mention um, that I am going to be sharing the link for where these slides will be available later today along with the, rev the webinar recording. So um, I just shared it in the chat box right now. So check that link out this afternoon if you, um, you want to see the the slides and click on the links and, and, and see all of that. That'll be available this afternoon. Um, I want to go back up. I think Sue had a question for Malai. So we could, um, yeah, we could take that question. And then if you have any other questions, please type them in the chat box right now and we'll make sure that we cover them. Hey, Sue. Um, could you clarify your question? Um, you know, your question is where I think this might apply on the college or university is with our DSS team and eliminating the question that might eliminate folks who have an SSI member in their household. Um, are there other key takeaways for college settings? 
so I mentioned the pre-screen we're going to be removing. It's no longer going to be that SSI completely eliminates um, the individual or household. Uh, we'll still have like a little reminder on the front of the pre-screen that talks about medical deductions and says that people with SSI can potentially take deductions. Um, I'm hoping that answered your question. Um, if you want to clarify, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and you can definitely ask that question or clarify it. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question, Sue. If not, um, definitely um, type it in the chat box or unmute yourself and um, ask us again. Okay, it looks like we have another question from Allison. Um, hi, Allison. Can our CalFresh outreach page be on our campus internet, which is accessed only with a student staff ID, or does it need to be available to the public? That is a great question. Zach or Andy, could you answer that? Um, I don't I don't think I have an answer right away, but Allison, I'd be more than happy to chat with you about that. I know that because your university works a little bit different. Um, it might be more of a challenge to get that information on there. So let's let's think about that and I'll I'll get back to you. Okay, any other questions? Thanks, Judy. We appreciate that. Uh, we hope that we hope that they'll be useful for everyone as they as they get their web pages and websites up. All right. Thank you, Sue. I also saw that you responded. Um, and if you have any more questions, um, definitely reach out to your program manager. I think that's Sheila. And so um, we can definitely um, have more discussions if you have questions about how to, you know, um, target SSI students on your campus or find out where they are. We can definitely um, do that together. Okay, so we'll leave the chat box open for a few more minutes, um, but if, if there's no other questions, we will let you all get, um, get back to your Fridays. Um, we can go to the next slide. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out to your program manager. That's going to be the, the best place to go, whether it's about the SSI expansion or the, the website stuff. Um, so this is just our general contact information, but yes, please feel free to reach out to your program manager specifically for, for any questions on those topics. Thank you, guys.
So it looks like we don't have any more questions coming in. Brandy, do you want to add anything? I don't know if Brandy, well, all right, then thank you all for joining us um, in this webinar today. If you have any questions, definitely reach out to your program manager or email them to us. Um, like Brandy mentioned, everything will be up on the website. All right, thank you everyone. Have a great weekend.